Hello, this is Channel Easy Self Host. In this video, we are going to run Image, which is a photo and video management solution that offers features like auto backup, nice looking mobile app, smart search, face detection, and many more. It's just like a self hosted version of Google Photo. I'm going to show you how to set up the image server and backup photos using its mobile app. Let's get started with setting up the server. Image recommends using Docker Compose and offers a Docker Compose template for setup. We will take this template as our foundation and tweak it to integrate with our proxy server. You can find their Docker Compose file on their website under the Docker Compose section. Here is the Docker Compose file after some changes. The differences are highlighted by the editor. We start by adding the proxy Docker network. We are going to use this network to connect our proxy server and the image server. For the service section, there are five services defined by the original Docker Compose file. I will go over them and explain their functionalities and where I made changes. The first service is the image server. It handles user-facing requests from mobile and web apps, and it also serves the web content. It's using the official image server image with the command to start the core image server. Here, I add a network config for the image server with both the default and the proxy network. The default network connects the server with the rest of the services in this Docker Compose. The proxy network connects the server with the proxy server defined in another Docker Compose file. For the volume section, we first define the location to store the uploaded photos. The actual location is defined by this environment variable upload location. This variable is configured in the .env file. Here I set it to a Docker volume named upload, and the volume is defined in the Docker Compose file at the end. You can also configure it to a path on the server host file system. It can be easier to access the actual files this way. Here we also specify the env file to the .env we just saw. This is for setting the environments of the server for configs like database credentials. We are going to talk about it in a moment. Next, I change the ports config to expose since we don't need to publish any ports to the server. The proxy server can access this service with the Docker network. Actually, the expose config is just for documentation purpose since the original image already exposes this port. This service depends on the Redis and the database service, so it will start after them. I also change all the restart policies in the original Docker Compose file from always to unless stopped. It gives us some flexibility to disable individual service, but it won't make any difference in most cases. The next service is the image microservices. Despite its naming, it actually does not handle any web requests. It will only handle the message from the Redis message queue. This service shares the same image with the image server, but the start command is different. The rest of the configuration is the same as the image server. The third service is the image machine learning. It will handle tasks like face detection and smart indexing. It uses a different Docker image. This service mounts a cache volume for machine learning models and also requires the .env file. The next service is Redis and it serves as the message queue for image. The last service is the database. It's a Postgres database with the PG Vector extension, so it's not using the vanilla Postgres image. Here we set the database credentials using the environments. They can be configured in the .env file. You only need to modify the database password to a strong and random password. The rest of the stuff can be left as is. For the database service, we mount the PG data volume to store the database files. At the end, there are three volumes defined, and we already talked about them. We also need to update our proxy rule for image. I'm using caddy, so I add a rule to proxy the hostname image.home.easyselfhost.com to the Docker service image server with port 3001. I recently posted a tutorial about using proxy for self-hosting. Check it out if you are interested. To run the image server, navigate to the directory with the Docker Compose on your server. And then run docker compose app d to start the Docker Compose. Now our image server is up and running. We also need to refresh the proxy configuration. 
For me, I'll just restart the Caddy server to let it reload. Now we can go to the browser to set up image. Let's go to the hostname we assigned to image. For me, it's image.home.easyselfhost.com. Now we can get started with image. Let's first create an admin user. And then log in as that user we just created. Choose the theme you like. I'll just keep the light theme. Here you can choose to enable the storage template feature. Image can store your photos in a file structure that has date or other information. And it has some predefined format that you can choose. Personally, I don't plan to access the files directly, so I'll just disable it. We will have the option to enable it later or change the format if we want. After this, we complete the setup and enter the image web app. To import photos, the easiest way is to just drag and draw photos here. But I think most people would want to import photos from their smartphones. So let's use the image mobile app to upload photos here. You can download it from the common mobile application stores listed on their website. I'm going to use the iOS app here, but the Android app will be mostly the same. Entering the app, we'll first need to enter our image server URL. That's the address we just typed in our browser. Then let's log in to our account. Now we successfully logged in and can see the photos we just uploaded from the browser. Let's start setting up photo backup by clicking the cloud icon in the top right corner. We need to give the image app full access to our photos. Then let's select the albums for backup. The recent album has all the photos on our phone, so I'll choose that. Now we can click start backup and the app will start uploading photos to the image server. If we click the setting button on the top right, we can see the backup options. Here we can turn on automatic foreground backup. So when we open the app, it will automatically start uploading. We can also turn on automatic background backup. So the app can backup new photos even when the app is not open. After a while, the app will finish backing up. You might need more time if you have more photos and videos. Every photo will have an icon suggesting that it's already backed up to the server. Now let's go back to the web app to explore more features. We can see the photos uploaded from the phone show up here. After the photos are uploaded, there will be some processing happening on the server. We can go to the administration and then click jobs to see the running jobs. Here we can see there are jobs like smart search and face detection are still running. After the jobs are done, we can start testing the smart search. If I search cats, the photos with cats will start popping up. We can also search words like ocean and city, and it will give back photos with great accuracy. These are all achieved with the machine learning models. You can also search photos based on metadata like location and other exif metadata. Speaking of location, you can also go to the map view to see your photos grouped by location on the map. The photos I downloaded on Unsplash don't have a lot of location information attached, but photos taken with smartphones will have accurate GPS data. Another great feature of image is face detection. We can go to the explore page to see faces listed here. If we click a face, we will see all photos with that person. Image also gives you the ability to fix some errors, like you can merge multiple faces into a single one. Besides these smart features powered by machine learning, there are other useful features. Image supports multiple users, so you can create users for others to back up their photos and even set quota on their storage. There is also an external management feature that allows you to see photo libraries already existing on your server file system. That's all for this video. Please consider subscribing for content like this. You can find the configuration files in this video on GitHub and the link is in description below. Thank you for watching.